So now in this video we're going to look at the N channel JFET. We're going to wire it up so that we can look at its IDSS. So you'll see that abbreviation a lot if you're studying JFETs. And one data sheet that I have explains IDSS as zero gate voltage drain current. So that means the current going through the drain is going to be set by the gate being at zero volts right there. That's the best I can explain that. For uh, the N-channel JFET, a lot of that depends on the particular component that you're using. So we're going to use the J310. Here's the pin layout really quick. Drain to the left, source in the middle, and gate to the right. I should have wrote them out, but uh, in case that it's what it is. Drain, source, gate. So for the uh, J310, you can expect somewhere around about 24 to 60 milliamps of current when you tie the gate directly to ground zero volts right here so we got five volts higher than zero volts and this one we got eight volts higher than zero volts right there and uh, so we can expect somewhere about 24 to 60 milliamps and mine actually all the ones I measured I think they're about 34 milliamps I don't think they vary much but if you get uh, J310s from uh, different batches or different manufacturers that's probably where it uh, varies a lot more but in any case each particular one will have a certain current it lets go through when you got that uh, gate to source. Mine appear to be about 34 milliamps. So I seem to reach that at 5 volts and above. With uh, LEDs, they're going to drop some of that voltage. So I raised it 3 volts there. And uh, because there's going to be less voltage across the component with the LEDs. So since we have a potential of 60 milliamps, I put uh, 3 in parallel because they'll split up the current. 60 milliamps would be 20, 20, 20 for a total. Since it's probably going to be 34, close to 33, there's going to be about 11, 11, 11. So we're plenty safe. And uh, in any case, you can keep raising the voltage. Once you get to a point where it levels off, it's going to hold steady, but uh, the component, the JFET gets hotter. So you don't want to raise the voltage too much. You want to be uh, careful about that. So let's look at it on the board. So now here we have the uh, J310. We got the drain up there, the source right there, and the gate right there. The gate and the source tied to ground. And I have this little jumper to the drain to give me a little point to measure with the uh, multimeter without having to touch the transistor and maybe throw it out of position or something. Kind of lose a connection. But in any case, there you can see we also have a gap where I'm going to take the uh, multimeter measurement. We got the multimeter there. Right now we are at five volts. And since we have the potential of uh, 60 milliamps, I set the power supply to provide uh, up to that amount. It won't provide any more though. And then we have the output on right now. So until that says on, it's not providing any power even though the display is lit up. We're gonna set this to milliamps, the uh, multimeter. And uh, the red probe stays right there for this particular meter. And so that's it. We can take our measurement really quick. I have the other side of the probes here. And we will go directly to the uh, jumper there. And there you can see 34 milliamps, as I said before. That seems to be what uh, all of my J310s will do. So again, I can go, uh, yeah, that was the right spot. I can go there or right to the uh, drain up there doesn't matter but this kind of shifts the component and messes up the connection a little bit at times so in any case we can also look at it with a higher uh, voltage so I'll zoom back and uh, we'll just look at it from back here I'll go up to even 8 volts right there so I'll just do this quick so the component doesn't heat up all that much and uh, there you can see we got 34 maybe it went up a spec and as it gets hotter it drops down really quick that's another reason why you might want to keep it from not getting too hot. So there you can see we have the eight volts that I put on the uh, data sheet. So I'm gonna take the LEDs, remember you gotta wire them in the right direction, but I'm putting a long lead anode to that yellow jumper, short lead the cathode down one spot. I'm gonna do the same over here. It's just gonna be on the other side of the uh, J310 right there. And we should find the same amount of current and uh, hopefully at 8 volts, but if not, then we just bump it up to 9, and we should have the uh, same current. So uh, there we go. I have the probes backwards. We got uh, 34. You just get a negative number. It doesn't hurt anything. But uh, we had 34, 
as the component gets hotter though I said as I said before then it uh, starts dropping in current a little bit so that's kind of nice it's a little protective it's dissipating power as the current's going through as uh, current going down I mean and uh, there you can see 34 even though we are at 10 volts so that's good that it's dropping the current that kind of keeps less current going through it gets a little less hot than it would if it was letting more current go through it that's called thermal runaway more uh, heat is making more current go through it it gets even hotter and more current goes through it till it burns out so that's that's nice now we're gonna turn the meter off I always turn it off and I always get it off measuring current if there's a power button that's it for this demonstration that's what IDSS means the current you're gonna get as long as you have enough voltage if the gate is at zero volts as well as the source so hope you enjoyed make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting click like subscribe the bell all that donate to patreon if you can that helps out the most I have links down in the description I'll see you in the next video